Yeah, that was, that's good. Hey, that's any, 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 any Italians here? Yeah. Yeah. Italian right there? Italian? Yeah, I got one for you. No, Tommy, this isn't the time for this. This only take a second. Tommy, I'm this not is gonna, for young comedians. That, I'm not, just going to take a second. This is for the Italians. This, you this, I got it. This is funny. <laughs> mangi la porta. Mangi la porta. What does it mean? It means eat the door. <laughs> it's not funny. It's funny. It's a, it's a, it's a classic Italian punchline. It's a, eat the door. Mangi la porta, eat the door. It's a, this room is filled with Italians. You'd hear a roar that you wouldn't really. <laughs> Even Sicilians will smile at that one. It's like, the court to eat the door. It's a classic punchline. Well, what's the joke? It's a rhetorical punchline, Dickie. You say that in the This makes you wonder. Just introduce the act. Okay, right? well, as we said, each of, the, each of the comedians wrote their own introductions, and I'd like to uh, read, read this. this, one. this. Up, Do, up front. Up front, right over there. Dear. Start again. Dearest Tommy, please tell them that I am the only woman on the Young Comedian Show this evening. She's the only woman on, on the Young Comedian Show this evening. <laughs> but things have been going well. Mm -hmm. I made six of, I made, made sex appearances on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. What did you say? No, what was that say? I thought it said uh, six. It says sex appearances on the Johnny Sex. No, read, read it. Read it again. I've made sex appearances on the no, Tonight no, Show with Johnny no, Carson. Read it. it says I made six appearances. Yeah, that's right. I made six appearances on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. I was born in England but moved to Australia as a child and grew up down under. <laughs> when I finished school, I came to America and started performing. Mm -hmm. P.S. I didn't have to sleep with a producer to get the show. But I sure enjoyed you, Tom. I don't, I don't believe that. Why don't you just introduce the lady? What are you talking? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a very funny lady, Maureen Murphy. Let's hear it. Maureen Murphy. <laughs> something wonderful. I have discovered these romantic Harlequin Gothic novels that all the women are reading and I'm really into this one and this is so exciting. I mean just listen to this. His pulsating lips met her throbbing shoulders as his gyrating fingers pressed against her pounding thighs. She could feel his pulsating, heaving, throbbing, beating pulse pulsating like a heaving, throbbing, swelling shaft of thrusting sunlight. <laughs> Have you read this? <laughs> then as he put on his throbbing trousers and adjusted his pounding suspenders, he heavingly said, I still respect you, Lady Diana. <laughs> Uh, Princess Diana, but I was raised in Australia, and I tried to explain to my mother that I wanted to be an actress. I said, Mother, I want to learn to cry real tears. I want to be able to show great emotion for someone I don't really care for. She said, become a housewife. <laughs> my mother, she always wanted me to be married all in white and all virginal. But I don't think a woman should be a virgin when she gets married. I think she should have at least one other disappointing experience. Because <laughs> there's a lot of unhappy marriages in Hollywood, like this one woman friend of mine told me she hated her husband so much that when he died, she had him cremated, blended with marijuana, and smoked him. <laughs> She said, that's the best he's made me feel in years. <laughs> but even dating is different. See, in Australia, a bloke will take you out to dinner, and if you don't come across, he won't ask you out again. It's different in Los Angeles. Here, you don't get dinner. They want to take you right back to their apartment and not even buy you a cup of tea. In Australia, making love is something rich and beautiful. It's worth a cup of tea. 
Only one man called me up and said, would you like to have dinner before I take you back to my apartment? I said, that would be lovely. He said, I picked you up about nine. You should have finished eating by then. <laughs> and then he called me baby all night. He went, hey, baby. Prove to me that you're my baby, baby. So I did. I dribbled on his shirt. <laughs> I met him in a disco, and you know the kind of man you meet in a disco? The kind that blow dry their chest hair? <laughs> They're so vain with all the mirrors, the way they look at themselves while they dance. I went home with a man I met in a disco once, and there was mirrors all over his bedroom. And he finally said, I want to make love. Would you mind leaving? I wish men were more romantic, like they were in the old days, like bring a woman roses. My mother would always say, a rose is the perfect symbol of romance. It dies after a few days. <laughs> its pretty petals fall off, and all you're left with is the ugly prickly thing. <laughs> so I was brought up Catholic, and we were told, that if we touched certain parts of our body, we'd go blind. Now, when I came here, I could see that wasn't true, because most baseball players have very good eyesight. <laughs> it's the umpires that are blind. But I wasn't told anything growing up. I used to think birth control was giving birth slowly. <laughs> and that mini-pads were very small apartments. <laughs> See, we, we were never told about the curse. The curse was slang for time of the month. And when I first got it, I saw the mummy's curse on television. I thought the poor thing has it so bad it's banished from head to toe. <laughs> There's even a woman in Los Angeles that owns her own football team. Georgia Rosenblum Frontier. What a career for a woman. She can go out in the field, watch them all bend over in the line of scrimmage and say, just think, I own every tight end on that field. <laughs> and you know they're going to have an all-woman football team next season? No tight ends, all wide receivers. <laughs> Women are so independent that one day, perhaps we'll have a woman president. Don't you think a woman president would be great? <laughs> well, she would, she would save the country money because she would only make half of what a man president makes. <laughs> And even with Billy and Jimmy Carter gone, there'd still be two boobs in the White House. <laughs> but you ever notice that when a woman gets to have an important position, they always say things like, she slept her way to the top. But they never say that about men. Senator Hayakawa, he slept his way to the top. <laughs> that politicians sometimes use lines on the country that men use on women? Like, trust me, go all the way with me and everything will be all right? And you believe them and nine months later the country's in trouble? <laughs> I think they should elect politicians every year, just like the Academy Awards. And I think Jane Fonda could be in charge. Nominees for Best Politician are... Jerry Brown, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> Jerry Ford, Which Way Is Up? <laughs> Senator Hayakawa, For Coma. <laughs> Alexander Haig, Raging Bull. <laughs> James Watt, To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> Teddy Kennedy, the goodbye girl. <laughs> All right, 
Teddy Kennedy, A Bridge Too Far. <laughs> And Ronald Reagan, heaven can wait. <laughs> Thank you.